So the Indian football team is on a high. They've just won their ninth SAF title. In fact, this year, if you take a look at it, they've won three major titles. And joining us is a man who's at the helm of the affairs, Igor Stimach, the coach of the Indian football team. More importantly, under him, the Indian team has managed to defend their SAF title the first time it's happened in the tournament's 30-year history. Igor, thank you so much for speaking to India today. Uh, firstly, I'll tell you, I've been following Indian football for very long and I got so used to watching disjointed teams go out on the on the football pitch. So the first thing that I noticed, and I'm very happy to you know report that, that you know, you can see the team, whether it's technically or tactically, they're playing like a cohesive unit. You know, that's rarely been seen in Indian football. What is the secret sauce? What have you done to ensure that they look like this on the football pitch? Simple, hard work. Repeating the very same or similar drills day by day, making sure the fitness conditioning level is up to the perfect perfect level, which you could clearly notice. Uh, not many teams can play high press football throughout 90 or 120 minutes. You know, normally at the highest intensity of football game in the world, where we can see in Premier League and all that, which is a different level. Let's make sure we understand that. The high press can go on for mostly 60 minutes, no more than that. Now, for Asian level of football, if we speak about, we are ready to do that and repeat throughout nine games in one month for 120 minutes without having cramps, without facing problems of injuries and having such a quick recovery after the game we play with the extra time and penalty shootout, which is obviously... Uh, uh, something great and i mean i don't mind trophies it's really nice to win trophies you know but what's the more important thing about this indian uh, uh, team at the moment is the way they perform and fight for each other on the pitch which is now very clear that there is a enormous amount of passion in the football we play enormous amount of positive energy and fearless football you know and that's actually now that little sweet part and very, very small part, which comes after lots of suffering, lots of sacrifice, lots of criticism and everything, which is in at any point in life, we can witness that, you know, behind the scene, no one sees and recognizes what you do, what you are working on, what are your strengths strength and weaknesses and how you approach all the problems you are facing. But when it comes to that little end, it's so sweet, you know. It's much more worth than this big gap where you need to put lots of sacrifice and everything else to get there. That, that's true. That's true. It's interesting, uh, Igor, that you talk about the fitness levels because India played to back-to-back extra times penalties. Yet you could see Kuwaiti players in that during extra time all down on the floor with cramps and, you know, their, their physiotherapists working on that. India, would they make too many substitutions, were, you know, had all the players up on their feet really get up. So that's true, actually. One thing that you've seen is the fitness level. How, I mean, if you can just dwell a bit more on that, what are the things that you worked on the fitness? Because you don't have the players with you throughout the year. You know, they play club football as well. But do you have like a plan for them that they keep following? What are the things that you've done to ensure this level of fitness where they can play high press for such a long time? Obviously, we cannot uh, have too much influence on our players when they are not with us when they are in their clubs, you know. But we do provide individual uh, training plans and programs on the points they need to keep working on while they are not with us. Oh. And I need to say uh, thanks to, to God, most of them are executing these plans. Although the pace of the game in ISL doesn't help them because it brings them down for, I would say, two levels nearly, you know, if we speak about pace of the game and intensity of the game. And it's a it's, uh, comfortable zone to them where they cannot advance and improve in their game. I need to say big thanks to ISL coaches. Don't, don't understand me wrong. But we need more hard of a work with these, especially these Indian boys, because they have a huge and enormous area uh, for progressing their football, you know. And... Obviously, it's not easy for foreign coaches uh, uh, working in ISL because the guys are working for the salaries and the most important thing for them is to get the results in a very short ISL season. So, you know, 
they come there, they have four or maybe five, six time to select the team, to adjust new foreign players and new signed players into the system to make sure that the style of play and the game they're going to produce looks at least decent, you know, which is absolutely difficult in such a short time. We don't see many foreign coaches spending more years than one season in Indian football, which is, again, not justice done to them. They are not provided also with such a short season and everything was going on enough time to work individually with Indian players, which is another big problem for the national team. But I need to mention many of the ISL managers and with most of them, nearly every day, I have a very correct relationship uh, uh, contact, continuous contact, uh, exchanging the information on the players uh, about their weaknesses, their strengths, what needs to be done and all that. But obviously the biggest problem we have still is the very important positions in the team which are occupied by foreign players. And this problem we're not going to overcome until we uh, don't start thinking wisely about interests and future for the national team. Right, that's been an ongoing debate in Indian football for a very long time. How many foreigners should be allowed as well? But just I'm um, just coming back to that fitness issue, and, and one player that I'm going to talk about there is Sunil Chetri. I mean, you know, he was outstanding during the both tournaments that we've seen in Intercontinental as well as SAF. Is it fair to say that while his biological age may be 39, almost you know, will be 40 in a year's time, his physical age? is much younger because he looks at par in terms of speed with all the other youngsters. Absolutely. His physical age is from 27 to 29. You see, he's still a very young player. You know, when we measure when we measure biological and physical uh, uh, age, I'm 56 now. I have a body of 40-year-old. You know, Sunil is 10 years younger with his body and with his regime in life, with his professionalism, commitment and everything. And while he's like that, we can count with him for another four or five years. And, and that's what I mentioned uh, earlier also, you know, what's the difference in, in approach? From the very beginning, the most raised question was who after Sunil? Yes. And I was never looking from that point. I was always trying to do everything to keep him alive with us. Never mind the problems in the club, not playing, playing, uh, playing different position. Never mind because he's such a great striker. He's the player from the old generation of Indian uh, uh, senior national team football with the great basic skills, which is missing today in Indian football. And why to think about letting him go? As a coach, I need to do everything to keep him alive, to keep alive his hunger, his attitude, uh, his leadership roles and everything else. You know, I think that's the main and most important role of the coach. Yeah. To keep I the hum hunger at the highest possible level with each and one of his players. Mm -hmm. To make sure that he advances his game with every training session and every drill we, we produce on the training pitch. And it's quite obvious how much Sunil is still enjoying his football. And let's go back to one thing. Yes. Get all the foreign strikers in ISL. He's much better than any of them. <laughs> with his record, with his years, with his fitness condition, just name one discipline. He's far better than any of them. But still, he still, for many years back, doesn't play as a center forward in his own club. That's something I, I cannot understand. Do you, do you reckon that sometimes it's the mentality because, you know, he's not he's not six foot, he's not big, he's not bulky, so you choose not to play him as centre forward, which again could be a mistake that coaches are making? I mean, I appreciate coaches, I tell you. I will not go too deep into that. Each coach has his own philosophy, some of the coaches, they have their own agents who are sending them the players, the, the boys who should help them score the goals, prepare the goals and all that. But if I was trained a uh, coach in the club in, in India where Sunil Chetri is player, I would never think about signing for his right. Never. I would do everything to sign many players as possible who are to prepare goals for him. Mm -hmm. And then he would score probably 25 to 30 goals each season in ISA. You know, 
instead of pushing him on the side and losing one player on the field. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. You know, so it's strange for me to be honest, but I'm not going into criticizing anyone. It's just a big surprise to me that he's pushed on the side where we threw out national team and much more high intensity games are proving that he is by far the best, including foreign players. That you have. That indeed is true. And, you know, the proof of the pudding is in its eating. You can see it on the pitch as well. Uh, Igor, uh, you know, I'm just going back to that SAF final. You were sitting in the stands and, and you know, the camera would cut to you quite often. Uh, I, I remember watching this particular instance and, you know, the camera was showing you. As soon as extra time was over in the finals, the camera cuts to you and I can see you gesturing to someone and whatever I can see from there, it seems like you're telling whoever you're gesturing that now penalties are there, it's done. We won it. You know, that sort of a confidence. Was that was that something that you were telling someone? Were you that confident that as soon as you reach penalty, it was done, the game was yours, the cup was yours? You are absolutely right. Hmm. You are absolutely right. I was so peaceful about everything. I was never in doubt that we might be losing this game. I was expecting us to win a game with a bigger margin before penalties, to be honest. And I was not happy with that game at the end of the day because we were not good in defensive transition. We didn't do what I was requesting us to do, to be uh, more clinical once we lose the ball, to be quicker, to get quicker behind the ball and immediately to put pressure on Kuwait players. Obviously, when they were as minutes were going on and the game was going on, Kuwaiti players were falling down with fitness conditioning level and it was much easier for us. But I would say that for uh, nearly 60 minutes, our reaction after ball loss was not good, not at all good, you know, because their wingers were clearly creating lots of problems to us with their inside cuts and going through a couple of our players and approaching the box in a very, very easy way and having open shots, which is not good. We need to work on this a lot more, you know. But when it comes to penalties, we were practicing penalties prior to the semi-final, prior to the final. And I could clearly see that we have eight, nine boys there, you know, very clinical at the penalties. I was surprised that Udanta was, uh, he, that he missed the penalty because he was one of the best in the penalty shootout. He some, somehow tried to do a replica shot of Sunil which I don't recommend to him in the future. He should stick to his own style of uh, penalty shootout. But then again, having two goalkeepers, which are great, mm. at the penalties, you know, it was another point which gave us uh, lots of confidence prior to the penalty shootout. All right. Uh, last couple of questions, Igor, before I let you go. Uh, you know, now it's going to be, as I said, three trophies already, but it's going to be a big year next few months. Uh, you know, you've got the King's Cup and then the Medeca Cup as well. Uh, how do you then, uh, you know, at the moment are planning in terms of preparations for these two major tournaments for the Indian team? Uh, I said uh, that some important things should happen in the next four or five weeks about uh, my future uh, and work with AIFF because what what we are having at the moment is something I was thinking about a lot and it's time now to discuss certain things and think about a longer period of future together. Mm -hmm. I will not wait January definitely to do to do that and it wouldn't be correct from my side or from AIFF side. And we're going to discuss that internally very soon because it's obvious that we can achieve things. We can make lots of progress in football, that we can make lots of and bring lots of excitement to Indian fans that football is awakening in India, which was our primary goal. Yes. And it would be sad to stop the process, you know. So we need to a little bit think about how to reorganize things and work and change the approach to a things and make sure that those most important things are on the first place, you know. So uh, I'm very positive about, about everything what's coming at us, you know. Suddenly I cannot make precise plans because still there is no official ISL calendar out. Mm -hmm. 
and suddenly I cannot keep planning anything until I get this and see what will be the duration of the camp prior to the King's Cup in Thailand, what will be duration of the camp prior to the Asian Games, which I will be involved with the boys, what will be the duration of the camp prior to the Merdeka Cup and how long, how much time we're going to get prior to the World Cup qualifiers and, and Asian Cup. Simple as that. Okay. No planning prior to that. Right. Uh, finally, Igor, uh, because, you know, just for our viewers who don't know where I Igor is talking about the future, his contract is still at the end of the uh, Asian Cup in 2024 with the IFF. And that's my final question to you. I know these are going to be discussions that will be between you and the All India Football Federation. But I'm going to ask you personally, the time that you spent with the Indian football team, with the boys, the kind of love that you got from the fans, uh, you know, are you at the moment in the frame of mind that you are see a long-term future with the Indian national team? Are you mentally prepared for that? Absolutely prepared and focused on everything, but uh, we need to discuss things mm -hmm. which should help national team and to me as a coach to have more stable situation prior to everything which needs to be done. And you will understand what I'm talking about. I don't want any uncertainty surrounding the national team. I want things to be clear and precise and I don't want to be dependable on one poor result in the future work with the national team. That's not how the football works. That's not kind of a process which needs to be uh, followed in Indian football and I will not put myself in a, such situation anymore with anyone, not only with Indian team. We need to yes. trade Put the things straight up, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I Open understand. up the things yeah. and, and go forward together. If obviously there is a there is a possibility from from the from the board, which I'm very happy about, and I need to mention that that uh, the our president and, and the board and everyone did everything possible to to organize as many possible games now in June, which was amazing for us. All credits to them, you know, because they they were in a time shortage, to be honest, you know, because you know that they were elected through the very difficult process and uh, there were not many teams available there to organize such tournaments and make sure that these tournaments have certain purpose and that there is a uh, host teams from Arab countries to participate. So credit to everyone who was involved in organizing the tournaments and obviously uh, the work has been done. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I have a strong feeling we can have a great future together. Yeah, yeah, I understand where you're coming from because everyone wants a definite sort of a structure in place. You want a more secure future. That's when you are ready to commit your future as well. And I think those are the conversations that will happen between uh, Coach Igor Stimak and the All India Football Federation. But I can tell you as a football fan and whoever, you know, I'm interacting with people who enjoy Indian football, they're happiest about the fact, one, how the Indian team is playing. Two, how many international matches the Indian team is playing. And as Igor said, probably the AIFF has a lot to do with it because continuous international football is what the fans really crave for. Finally, we've got that. But Igor, thank you so much for taking our time speaking to India today. Here's wishing you all the very best for the tough season that's coming ahead. Thank you so much. Looking forward to speaking to you again. Match se jude, aapke har sawal ka, hum denge jawab. Janne ke liye har update, live analysis, special interviews, Download कीजिए Sports the Camp.